the Garden of Cyrus, or the Quincangial Lozenge, or Network Plantations of the Ancients, artificially, naturally, mystically considered. The Dedicatory Epistle to my worthy and honoured friend Nicholas Bacon. Had I not observed that pure blind men have discoursed well of sight, and some, without issue, excellently of generation, I, that was never master of any considerable garden, had not attempted this subject. But the earth is the garden of nature, and each fruitful country a paradise. Dioscorides made most of his observations in his march about with Antonius, and Theophrastus raised his generalities chiefly from the field. Beside, we write no herbal, nor can this volume deceive you, who have handled the massiest thereof, who know that three folios are yet too little, and how new herbals fly from America upon us from persevering inquirers. The Turks, who pass their days in gardens here, will have gardens also hereafter, and delighting in flowers on earth, must have lilies and roses in heaven. In garden delights, tis not easy to hold a mediocrity. That insinuating pleasure is seldom without some extremity. The ancients venally delighted in flourishing gardens. Many were florists that knew not the true use of a flower, and in Pliny's day none had directly treated of that subject. Some commendably affected plantations of venomous vegetables. Some confined their delights unto single plants, and Cato seemed to dote upon cabbage. That in this garden discourse we range into extraneous things, and many parts of art and nature, we follow herein the example of old and new plantations, wherein noble spirits contented not themselves with trees, but by the attendance of aviaries, fish-ponds, and all variety of animals, they made their gardens the epitome of the earth, and some semblance of the secular shows of old.